City of Stephen Point Common Council Meeting, recorded March 15, 2021. Okay, I have seven o'clock. I will call the regular meeting of the City of Stevens Point's Common Council to order. Clerk Yenter, could you please call the roll? Jennings. Here. Shore. Here. Nabel. Here. Sarah Zua. Here. Johnson. Here. Slowinski. Here. Kneebone. Here. Leek. Here. Dalton. Here. Fischler. Here. Morrow. Here. 11 present. Uh, we will continue on. Please join me for our salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, One nation under God, under God indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you all very much. Um, we have a couple of announcements. The first one is that there will be no closed session this evening. Um, we're, we're just not ready to, to bring that forward yet, so we will not have a closed session this evening. <clears throat> and um, the other one was uh, something that I thought was important enough to bring forward to City Council to make sure that everybody is aware of it, and that relates to our uh, Economic Development Director, Ryan Karnaski. Seems that uh, recently, through our Cities and Villages Mutual Insurance Company, he completed a 10-week program regarding virtual leadership. So please join me in congratulating Director Konoski on his efforts and commitment. Congratulations, Ryan. Moving on to item number three. If persons who wish to address the mayor or the council for up to three minutes on a specific agenda item must register, I'm sorry, non-agenda item could register the request at this time. If there's a public hearing and we have none tonight, uh, you would not be required to identify yourself uh, until the public hearing is declared open by myself. I have um, Alderperson Kneebone and Bill Sherrill signed up for their three minutes. Is there anyone else wishing to take three minutes on a non-agenda item this evening? Yes. Speak louder. Yes. Who, who, who is yes? Yes, my name is Dave Iden. Dave Iden. Okay, I will put you down. Um, Marla Schultz as well. Marla Schultz, get you. Okay, anyone else wishing to speak for up to three minutes? Just going through, because again, we've got a couple of screens here, people. I want to make sure we don't miss anybody. Okay, and as a reminder, uh, please keep yourselves on mute unless you are speaking and called upon to speak. Uh, if you have a comment during any of our agenda items, uh, signify by raising a virtual hand, waving on the screen, sending a message in chat, whatever it happens to be, I will do my best uh, to make sure that uh, we offer ample time for those who wish to speak. Seeing no one else wishing to register for the non-agenda item, I will move on to item number four, which is those persons who wish to address the mayor and council for up to three minutes on a non-agenda item. At this point, Alderperson Kneebone, I will give you the floor and you will have three minutes. Thank you, Mayor. I would invite everyone to check out the Stevens Point Police Department's annual report. It should probably be on the city website. One thing that stands out to me is the transparency the report uh, uses around uh, use of force incidents. And the report brings out that the use of force incidents have declined yearly since 2017. And I think that speaks a lot about the professionalism and the training uh, that uh, the women and men of the Stevens Point Police Department go through and how seriously they take their 
their jobs. And uh, so kudos to all of them and to Chief Center and to their families as well for the sacrifices they all make in the service of our community. Thank you very much, Alderperson Nibon, uh, also the representative for Council on the Police and Fire Commission. Bill Sherrill. Good evening, thank you. Bill Sherrill, 1656 Main Street, Stevens Point. This February, my wife Serena and I purchased 1656 Main Street on the corner of Division in Maine. Our plans are to renovate this historical beauty and transform it from college housing into a single family home. Recently, we joined the A&E Com public discussion regarding the Division Street corridor, where we learned that according to the most minimal plan, it will remove nine and a half feet of green space to be replaced with pavement for a right turn lane. Not only do we want to express our concern on how this negatively impacts our renovation plans of the yard and the 136 year old home, we also ask that the following be taken into consideration before proceeding. First, presuming the pandemic stopped the process, we ask that the downtown targeted master plan in partnership with Vanderwall be completed and made public. This will provide the opportunity to see how these plans will work together for the downtown, Maine, Clark, and Division Streets. Secondly, we would ask that the City of Stevens Point strategic plan be completed and in partnership with Atlas be made public. We hope that the goals of the city as a whole be taken into consideration when planning roadways. And then third, we would ask that a timeline or projection when possible for these projects and plans be available. In our situation, if all these plans and timelines were available, it would allow us the determinate, to be able to determine if investing in the Main Street property makes sense. There's a big difference if such changes will happen in five years or in 15 years. To be clear, we do realize the importance of transportation. If the impacting right turn lane is deemed necessary and is the plans demonstrate a value add to the community, we can all accept that. In conclusion, we ask for a pause and re-evaluation of the Div Division Street plans until all three plans may be brought together and made public. Thank you for your consideration and time. Thank you very much. Um, Dave Iden. Okay. I mean, yep. Yes, the um, reason I'm uh, here today is uh, I think we need to open, open these meetings to the public and uh, the Portage County meetings have been uh, open to the public to uh, come in person and I would really like to see that carried through here as we uh, approach the downside of the pandemic also. And constituents um, uh, want to be represented, and at least have have an ability to, to be down there and, and uh, view the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Iden. And last, Marla Schultz. Hi. Thank you. Um, I would like to express my concern of some difficulties that people are having when they want to make improvements to the property. I talked to one person that lives in uh, my district today in fact and he took a home that was about to be condemned and keeps making improvements but he sometimes has a hard time getting getting things amended just so he can improve on his house and you know this time I don't know all of what goes into allowing somebody to build on their property but it is their property and if they're improving their property to me, I would think, well, that's a good thing because people see that if they pass by the house and it's in disrepair, they're going to think, wow, the city doesn't care about its buildings. But if it looks really nice because the owners made improvements, that reflects well on the city and could bring people to move here because the people take good care of their houses. But it's hard if they're not allowed to. If, you know, if the council says, well, we can't amend this. And so you can't add 
you know, you can't do X, Y, Z on your, on your property. And so that, I mean, that is just what I found out today from this gentleman. And so that could, that's a concern. If there's something you can do to make it easier for people to improve their property, that would, that I think that would be a big benefit for the city. Thank you very much. Um, and in the interest of, of getting the problem solved, uh, Marla, if, if you want to have that person contact our community development department or the inspection department, uh, or they could contact my office. I'm not sure what the specifics are, but um, if, if there's something we can do to work with that person, um, we will certainly do that. Sometimes navigating the rules of city government can be challenging. All right, our speaker list is exhausted, so we will move on to our regular action item agenda, and that is item number five, beginning on page five, that is the consent agenda. Is there anyone who wishes to pull anything from the consent, I'm sorry, any alders who wish to pull anything from the consent agenda for further discussion? This is Alder Slowinski. Yes, sir. Is there any ability that, or I guess maybe the city attorney can give me some guidance as far as I need to abstain from that finance committee um, item number two, but I just, I would like to be part of the rest of the approval. So I don't know, I guess. I'll tell you what, um, we can we can pull that one for a separate consideration, allowing for that abstention of just that one item, uh, if that's acceptable. All right, thank you. Anyone else wishing to pull something from the consent agenda? Okay, so then I would look for a motion uh, for the consideration of the consent agenda with uh, the item, I'm trying to find it here. Item number two from the finance committee was the moving and relocation services for Edgewater Manor. That item will be pulled and considered separate. Uh, uh, President Johnson, you had your hand up. I do, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda with the exception of the one item to which Alder Slowinski wishes to abstain. Thank you. Do we have a second? Zara second Zua. by Zara Zua. Any discussion on the consent agenda? President Johnson, your hand is back up. We're good? Okay. All right. Um, Alder Nabel? Thank you, Mayor. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find where, where you're at on where you said, I see minutes and actions of the finance committee meetings. Yeah. Um, so on the second page- I don't page, see anything about, the, about Edgewater there, so I might be looking at the wrong thing. Um, I think. You have the, the council agenda for tonight in front of you? Yeah, you, I, you said page five, so that's why I-, I Oh, it's- that. Oh, I did say page five, didn't I? I am so sorry on that. That is. Yeah, I thought I was kind of like where I'm lost. <laughs> well, what I meant is the council, uh, the the item, the the information on that. Okay. Under starts on page five. five. Okay. So, for example, the minutes and actions of the common council meeting that we're going to be approving. Okay. Start on page five. I didn't mean that the agenda right. item was on page five. I'm sorry. No, I appreciate that. Thank you very okay. much for. Um, explaining so I could find my way. Thank you. Sorry, I apologize. Usually when I say the page number, that's where the item information starts for that particular agenda item. Alder Shore, did I see a hand up? Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak on the consent agenda with that one item pulled? All right. Um, Alder persons, if you are in favor of the consent agenda approval, signify by saying aye. If you're opposed, signify by saying nay. And Clerk Yenter will call the roll. Jennings. Aye. Shore. Aye. Mabel. Aye. Zarazua. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Slowinski. Aye. Kneebone. Aye. Leek. Aye. Dalton. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Morrow. Aye. Unanimous consent, that is approved. We do have the minutes and actions of the finance committee meeting from March 8th, item number two from your agenda, which was awarding the proposal for moving and relocation services for Edgewater Manor residents. Uh, this item was pulled to allow Alder Slowinski to abstain from the vote. 
Alder persons, what are your wishes? President Johnson. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, that contract. Thank I you. second, Alder Morrow. Morrow seconds. Any discussion there? Hearing none, clerk, would you please call the roll? Jennings. Aye. Shore. Aye. Mabel. Aye. Sarah Zua. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Slowinski is abstained. Nebon. Aye. Leek. Aye. Dalton. Dalton? I think she's on mute still. There we go. Uh, older person Dalton, we didn't hear you. Aye. Thank you. Fischler. Aye. Morrow. Aye. And that is approved. Um, item number six is on page 43 of your packet that begins on page 43 and that is a resolution extending the relaxing of open intoxicants ordinance on specific days in the downtown area. This is coming to you all the persons because if you recall we began this last year um, in the midst of COVID trying to uh, allow for some additional uh, opportunities, uh, particularly in the downtown area. It was well received and went over very well with zero incidents that I'm still aware of. Uh, that was then extended through March 31st of 2021. As you know, then March 31st is coming up. So we are looking at extending this. Uh, the proposal is through October 31st of 2021, giving us really all through the, the summer and, and fall season. Um, but of course, if there are objections to that, we can certainly discuss those. Thoughts, comments, President Johnson? I'd like to make a motion to approve that. Um, we, we saw some pretty good outcomes and no problems. I believe um, Acting Chief Zenner can uh, contest to that and uh, it seems an appropriate course of action. Thank you. Thank you, do we have a second? Zara Zua. Zara like Zua second. seconds. Discussion. Alder Nabel. Alder Nabel, you're on mute. Thank you very much. Um, Mayor and Common Council, I just have a question because I was missing and that's my fault last week. Um, is this going to be only, which day could you clarify what the days are that this will be open for? Is this Monday through Sunday, you know, Every seven day. days a week? Yep, it, we, th this is a continuation of what was extended last fall. Okay. Um, and because there were no problems during the limited time frame, we chose as a council to extend it, mm -hmm. um, opening it up from noon to nine every day of the week. Um, and this would continue that. Okay, and the perimeters one more time of where that's allowed? The map is included on page 44 of your packet. Thank you. It's, a, it's an area generally defined by, um, well, it's not really generally defined. Water Street, Third Street, Clark, um, up to the Great Lakes parking lot, we'll call it. Um, and the, the, generally the downtown area. Okay. Allowing them to grab a, a drink and walk to the park if they need to, that sort of thing. All right, thank you very much for the clarification. Not a problem. Any other comments? Alder Nabone. I have a, qu a quick question. Um, should things get out of hand, all we would do is come back and do uh, rescind the ordinance? Because I, I, I'm also in favor, uh, as long as we, we've got an out in case things get bad, but I don't suspect they will. Thanks. That is, that is correct. Um, pretty much every ordinance on the books is subject to the council. Uh, and if you choose to change them, you can. Any other comments? Chief Zenner, I'm gonna give you the opportunity if you wish to speak to any incidents that you've had uh, one way or the other on this. We've had no issues since uh, we implemented this program. Thank you. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second. If you're in favor, vote yes. If you're opposed, vote no. And Clerk Yenter will call the roll. Morrow. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Dalton. Aye. Leek. Aye. Nebon. Aye. Slowinski. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Zerzua. Aye. Nabel. Aye. Shore. Aye. Jennings. Aye. Unanimous consent, that is approved. Item number seven begins on page 45 of your packet. And that's a request from the city of Stevens Point for a conditional use permit to construct the fire department training site at 3100 Whiting Avenue, consistent with chapter 23.02, sub one, sub A, sub three, sub A. Uh, we spoke about this pretty extensively. Creating that regional training facility is going to be something that uh, is gonna live well past all of us. Alder persons, what are your wishes? Alder Fischler. Okay. Alder Fischler, go ahead. Um, I'd like to move approval for the conditional use permit to construct the fire department training site at 3100 Whiting Avenue. Thank you. We'll give the second to Alder person Kneebone. Discussion. <laughs> Hearing and seeing none. Oh, well, the, oh wait. Where? Yes. I can't hardly praise the police department without also praising <laughs> the fire department tonight. I think this is going to be a huge um, positive uh, on the city. It's going to bring firefighters and who knows who from all over the state and region most likely. So kudos to the fire department and mid-state and everybody that made this happen. Thank you very much. Yes, and I, I concur with you 100%. Uh, we've been working on this with the fire department in my office uh, in Mid-State for quite some time, several years. And to see this finally coming to fruition is something that's very exciting. We will have firefighters trained here in Stevens Point that will literally be all over the country. Uh, so it's very exciting. Anyone else wishing to speak? Okay, hearing none. Again, uh, Clerk Enter, please call the roll. Jennings. Aye. Shore. Aye. Nabel. Aye. Zerazua. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Slowinski. Aye. Nebone. Aye. Leek. Aye. Dalton. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Morrow. Aye. 11-0, uh, that is approved. Item number eight begins on page 47 of your packets. And that is a request from Tom Owens representing the Stevens Point Area School District for a conditional use permit to construct a bus garage addition and other improvements consistent with the chapters defined uh, in the agenda item at 1900 Polk Street. Alder Nabel. Yes, I would like to approve the resolution for the conditional use permit for 1900 Polk Street for the construction of a bus garage addition. Thank you, do we have a second? Second Alder by Fischler. Fischler. Discussion. Hearing and seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Morrow. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Felton. Aye. Leek. Aye. Kneebone. Aye. Slowinski. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Sarazua. Aye. Nabel? Aye. Shore? Aye. Jennings? Aye. Unanimous consent, that is approved. Item number nine is a request from Don Scafidi representing Regent Street Apartments, LLC, to amend the City of Stevens Point Comprehensive Plan Future Land Use Map for the purposes of amending the future land use designation from residential to commercial, office, and multifamily at 3707 Stanley Street. Alder persons, what are your wishes? Lee Carroll, I'll move to approve. Thank you, do we have a second? I second, Alder Morrow. Morrow seconds. Discussion. Hearing and seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Jennings. Aye. Shore. Aye. Nabel. Aye. Sarazua. Aye. 
Johnson. Aye. Slowinski. Aye. Kneebone. Aye. Leek. Aye. Dalton. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Morrow. Aye. Okay, 11-0, that is adopted. Item number 10 is on page 49 of your packet, and that's a request from Don Scafidi representing Regent Street Apartments, LLC, to rezone 3707 Stanley Street from R2 single family residential to B4 commercial. Alder persons? President Johnson. Motion to approve. Thank you, do we have a second? I. Uh, well, I'm going to give the second to Alder Jennings. I didn't quite hear if that was a for sure thing, Alder Morrow or not. So seconded by Alder Jennings. Discussion? <coughs> Hearing and seeing none, clerk, would you please call that roll? Morrow. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Dalton. Aye. Leek. Aye. Kneebone. Aye. Flowinski. Aye. Johnson? Aye. Sarazua? Aye. Nabel? Aye. Shore? Aye. Jennings? Aye. And 11 0, that is adopted. Item number 11 is on page 50 of your packets. And that is a request from the City of Stevens Point to amend Chapter 23 of the Zoning Ordinance of the Revised Municipal Code of the City of Stevens Point. Said request adds section 23.01 sub 14 as it relates to fencing guidelines that are sought to be transferred from chapter 30, which is the building code to chapter 23 of the zoning code. Director Kurnowski, do you have anything you want to add on that? Uh, this is consistent with what's within chapter 30 right now. We're working on a complete rewrite of our building code to be um, in compliance with our delegated municipality status. Uh, part of the rewrite included transferring the fencing guidelines and down the road the driveway guidelines from the building code into the uh, zoning code which is where they probably should be thank you very much all the persons what are your wishes president johnson move to approve love to see consistency thank you all tomorrow i second thank you very much discussion Hearing and seeing none, clerk, would you please call the roll? Jennings. Aye. Shore. Aye. Nabel. Aye. Sarazua. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Flowinski. Aye. Kneebone. Aye. Leek. Aye. Dalton. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Morrow. Aye. Okay, 11 0, that is adopted. Item number 12 is on page 53 of your packet, and that is ratification of the 2021 through 2023 tentative agreement with the Stevens Point Police Officers Organization. Alder Shore. I will move approval of that tentative agreement. Thank you. Do we have a second? Seconded by Nabel. Discussion? Chief Zenner or HR Manager Yakush, anything to add? Okay. Um, seeing no discussion, no one raising their hand. Clerk Enter, would you please call the roll? Morrow. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Dalton. Aye. Leek. Aye. Kneebone. Aye. Slowinski. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Zarazua. Aye. Nabel. Aye. Shore. Aye. Jennings. Aye. 11 0, that's adopted. Item number 13 is on page 58 of your packet, Alders. Uh, that is to award the bituminous patching project to American Asphalt in an amount not to exceed $99,730.76. This is Alder Slowinski. I will move to approve uh, the award to, of the bituminous patching project to American Asphalt. And they might not exceed $99,730.76. Thank you, Alder. Do we have a second? Seconded by Nabel. Discussion? 
Hearing and seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Jennings. Aye. Shore. Aye. Mabel. Aye. Zarazua. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Slowinski. Aye. Kneebone. Aye. Leek. Aye. Dalton. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Morrow. Aye. 11 0. That is approved. Item number 14 is on page 59 of your packets, and that is to award the curb, gutter, and sidewalk project to Farner Asphalt Sealers in an amount not to exceed $53,328.95. What are your wishes? I'll move to approve, Jennings. Thank you. Second by Johnson. Yes, sir. Discussion. Hearing and seeing none, clerk to enter, please call the roll. Morrow. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Dalton. Aye. Leek. Aye. Kneebone. Aye. Slowinski. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Zerazua. Aye. Nabel. Alder, you were on mute. Alder Nabel. Sorry, I hit it too quickly. <laughs> Aye. Thank you. Aye. Jennings. Aye. Unanimous consent, that is approved. Item number 15 is on page 60 of your packet, and that's to award the site work contract to Green Thumb Sprinklers and Landscaping in an amount not to exceed $27,082 for project 20.054, the Buchel Park Playground Development. Alder Morrow, this is to a, this is to a, this is to approve. Okay, uh, motion by Morrow, seconded by Zarazua. Thank you. Discussion. Alder Nebone. Uh, uh, I will recuse on this one. I, the individual does work for me, so the appearance of conflict. So I'll recuse on the vote. Thank you. Understood. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Discussion. Hearing none, with Alder Kneebone abstaining, uh, clerk, enter, please call the roll. Jennings. Aye. Shore. Aye. Mabel. Aye. Zarazua. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Slowinski. Aye. Kneebone is abstained. Leek. Aye. Dalton. Aye. Fischler? Aye. Morrow? Aye. Okay, 10 zero, one abstention. The motion is adopted. Item number 16 is on page 63 of your packet, and that's an ordinance amendment, section 9.05, as it relates to parking. Again, just making some minor modifications to uh, clean up our ordinances. Alder Persons, what are your wishes? Alder Jennings? Jennings, I'll move to approve. Thank you, do we have a second? I'll second. Oh. All the Slowinski. Seconded by Slowinski. Discussion. Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Morrow. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Dalton. Aye. Leek. Aye. Kneebone. Aye. Slowinski. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Zarazua. Aye. Naval? Aye. Shore? Aye. Jennings? Aye. That is approved. Item number 17 is on page 64 of your packets. That is a res preliminary resolution for the 2021 Streets Improvement Project 21-01 uh, Special Assessments for ins the Installation of Storm Sewer Laterals and Sidewalks. Um, Director Lemke or Director Badoon, anything to add to this? This is just a preliminary resolution. No, nothing to add from my end. Me neither, just here for questions. Perfect. And I would need a motion um, to accept the preliminary resolution. President Johnson. Uh, move to approve the preliminary uh, resolution. Okay, do we have a second? I second, Alder Morrow. 
We'll, we'll give the second to Zara Zua this time. Uh, any further discussion? This is Alder Morrow. I just want to say just how important this is for our everyone in, involved to keep our infrastructure up. Um, we don't want to be one of those cities that lets that lets things go for far too long, and that costs the city and the tax and the taxpayers more and more and more money. Understood. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Hearing none, clerk, would you please call the roll? Jennings. Aye. Shore. Aye. Nabel. Nabel. Yep. Wait, no, nope. you're on mute. Okay. There you go. Aye. Zarazua. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Slowinski. Aye. Kneebone. Aye. Leek. Aye. Dalton. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Morrow. Aye. And that is approved. I don't know, 19 is, I'm sorry, 18 is the approval to award the utility roofing project, project 21.0 or dash 09 to Pioneer Roofing in an amount not to exceed $416,000 $66.55. Director, anything to add there? Uh, nothing to add. Uh, one project was well under our estimate and one was just a, a shade over. So uh, everything pretty well within our approved capital. Thank you. Alder Persons, what are your wishes? I'll move approval, Alder Slowinski. Thank you. Do I have a second? Nebone will second. Seconded by Nebone. Further discussion? Hearing none, uh, clerk, please call the roll. Morrow. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Dalton. Aye. Leek. Aye. Kneebone. Aye. Slowinski. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Zarazua. Aye. Nabel. Aye. Shore. Aye. Jennings. Aye. That is approved. Item number uh, 19 is consideration of one-time funding for the Stevens Point Alliance to support downtown area events and activities. President Johnson, uh, you brought this forward. I'll turn the floor over to you. Oh, thank you very much. Um, as I stated at the Finance Committee meeting, um, this was something I had uh, talked about with the Stevens Point Alliance back a year ago or last summer about adding this into the 2021 budget. Um, it didn't, didn't happen and I wanted to bring it back as, uh, as I said, I would, would try to work to get them some funding. As you saw, they had a number of uh, new information that came I don't know, the, in the email the other day that, uh, Kathy Johnson sent along um, a number of other people on some of the ways they intend to use this. Um, I have spoken with uh, Sarah Brish about this and um, and she, she said as a one-time funding, it's we have to find, her words where we gotta find a more uh, permanent way of, of funding this. And of course, I think that will be the um, business improvement district. So I'm putting a plug in for the business improvement district in that process. Um, but this is a one-time funding um, really to be a bridge to the bid and also to be a bridge for COVID. Um, not intended to be long-term and uh, it is much less than their original request, request of, of $20,000. Thank you. Alder, uh, Alder Nabel. Thank you again, Mayor. I just want to know what is the dollar amount then because I read the 20,000 and I didn't hear a different amount or is that from the second letter where they wanted just for the flagging and stuff like seven to $8,000? What was approved at finance was 5,000. Okay. Right. Uh, Alder so Slowinski. Uh, correct yeah, Alder wrong, Slowinski made the motion. Um, yeah. I believe Alder Dalton second did it. It was 5,000, yes. All right, thank you. And there was a split vote in finance. This is Alder Slowinski. Yes, sir. 
Uh, I would like to move uh, approval of a one-time funding of $5,000 for the Stevens Point Alliance to su support the downtown area events and activities. And if there's a second, I have just a brief comment. Thank you. Do we have a second by Zarazua? Yes. Okay. Alder Slowitzki, you have the floor. And again, I pretty much uh, explained how I felt last uh, last week at, uh, at committee. Uh, I, I strongly feel that this is a minimal investment um, by the taxpayers of the city, um, you know, to support uh, what the Stevens Point Alliance, uh, Alliance provides for the city and the community regarding, uh, you know, just the quality of life uh, uh, events, activities to attend, um, you know, just to get out, especially, uh, you know, in this time of uh, the pandemic, it just allows people another opportunity. And again, I just feel that it's a very, very minimal investment for a, uh, a great return. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Alder Shore. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, uh, I, I voted against this in committee and uh, also plan to tonight. Um, I, I didn't make any comments in the last meeting and I just want to say um, I, I definitely hear um, very strong arguments on both sides of this. This is, uh, for me anyway, a close call. Um, and I wanna be sure to recognize uh, the work that's being done with the Alliance to try and uh, improve the relationship. Um, and so I wanna commend that even if, uh, if I'm opposing this tonight. Um, and uh, I think my main uh, way that I lean is that I think that some of the other ways that we support uh, a strong and vibrant downtown uh, are more significant uh, and are more in keeping with what we're here to do. Thank you. Thank you. Alder Marl. Um, I, I initially voted against against this. Um, after looking into us more, I think that, all, that Alder Slinsky had a really good point. Our downtown is our downtown. Um, for years, it was really neglected. Um, I still do have some concerns, but I but I really want to give this a chance and see what and see what the downtown is going to be able to do. I know that not everyone is a part of the downtown alliance, but like but again, when I was in a union, not everybody was in a union. So um, they try to get everyone involved. With some piece, some people just don't want to be involved, but. A high tide raises all ships. So I want to try to see what this is able to do and I will be voting for this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Alder Jennings, then Alder Nebo. Yeah, I've already um, made some number of comments about this. Um, this is not sustainable economic policy. It is unequal and it ignores the downtown business owners and properties owners who do not, um, who disagree with SPA being funded in this way. Um, in reference to the bid, uh, I think the bid project is probably pretty much dead. And that is partly or almost entirely as a result of the resistance of the leadership of SPA. Um, again, I'm the elder that has been at all these meetings. You've had staff tell you, uh, that, that, this, that um, this is not the way to fund things. Um, so I will be voting no. Thank you. Uh, Alder Nemo and then Alder Leek. I, this one is really, is really hard. I think we've done things in the past to help local businesses as a result of the economic downturn due to the pandemic. Um, I can't see doing this year after year after year, but as a one-time funding source to give these guys a boost to maybe get some big event going downtown that brings people in to all the businesses and to the community toward the end of the summer, maybe as things get safer. Um, I think I'm inclined to support this. I think anything that helps the downtown will help the community as a whole. And, and as a one-time expenditure, as a result of COVID, I, I think this is a 
pretty small price. Thank you. Alder Leek and then Alder Fischler. So when it comes to a reaction to COVID back in, I guess it was a year ago now when we did the, the rent thing uh, or the mortgage thing, that was in response to specific economic needs uh, as a result of COVID. I, I don't see a lot here, uh, by the way, I'm not supporting this. Um, I don't see a lot here that's specific. You know, we want to hold some events, uh, which, you know, if as some, I've been on, you know, again, grant, uh, grant review committees before, and I, I'd like to see a lot more specificity in what we're planning to do with this $5,000. It's for, you know, it kind of goes into a, seems to be going into some sort of fund for marketing or, you know, sort of general ideas will hold some events is what I read in the letter, which uh, is not specific enough for my, what I would want to see here. Thanks. Thank you, Alder Fischler. And then back to President Johnson. And then Nebo, or uh, Nebo. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I understand both sides of this as well. I think it's important to understand that a lot of our businesses have been affected negatively by COVID and I'm not opposed to doing just a one time, um, not that this would be approved every year or that this would be something that we do all the time, but it would be nice to see where the $5,000 goes. It looks like, you know, from the additional information that Kathy provided, that um, it would be going to either some flags downtown from my understanding or to some events. So maybe she could provide a follow-up to us potentially as to how that money is actually used. I think that would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, we're gonna go to President Johnson, Alder Nabel, then Zarazua. Thank you. And uh, I'm glad you're keeping track. Um, so I, Alder Fischler kind of, uh, stole my thunder. The additional information uh, that was provided by uh, Ms. Johnson uh, about uh, some of the things they plan to do, that email came out earlier or late last week or mid last week. I think it has some of the detail. I'm not opposed at all to the idea of having them come back and say, this is how we use it. This is, this is where it went. And I think we've asked that of the farmer's market. And I'm hoping that we'll hear back from the farmer's market on their experiences at the square this last year, um, because they do have a contract for us for the use of downtown as well. And uh, I know that Joel does plan to provide us with that information. And I think in a similar way, it's reasonable to ask that uh, of the SPA. So I, I agree with Alder Fischler that some feedback at the end of the season would be incredibly helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Alder Nabel. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I also would like to say I can see both sides of this, um, but I also look at the fact that the city has really tried hard to help people because of COVID, especially the downtown um, with leases, but also with changing an ordinance that has been not one that a lot of people were really for, but we also felt it was necessary to help the finances for the bars and the restaurants downtown. And so we have done that for them and we're doing it again. And I think that we're not allowing it other places. So we're doing a lot for the downtown Alliance as it is. And I will be voting against it only because I don't feel then we're being fair to other places. And unless there was a specific thing that would be um, like the flags, if it was given to us as here is what we would do with it, and these are flags that can be utilized throughout and it'd be part of a, a great campaign for all the businesses down there. That would be different, but I'm sorry that I, I'm not really for this unless that is a specific thing like the flags. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Zarazua. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I, I know I've expressed I'm in favor of this from the beginning, but just a few things. I think when we're talking about fairness and equity, we have a concentration of businesses downtown, and that's what makes it important that businesses downtown survive. It doesn't mean other businesses in town are not important, but we have events that happen downtown that benefit all of downtown, not just those that are in the alliance. So there's also those events that they've put on for years. Yes, there's been support from others, including the city, but 
in a year like this one that has been COVID and the way it's been, having this extra help, I think, is going to be critical in trying to get us back to what we consider normal. Um, I also think that the, the Alliance has shown a lot of support for our community and the things that they have fundraised and donated, like the lights that are on the square and the first year with the ice rink and the kayak launch. I mean, these are things that are improving our community and are not directly, you know, those business owners are not individually benefiting, it benefits our city as a whole. And so um, those are some of the reasons why I do support this and I hope my fellow alders will do as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I just wanna make another comment. I, I spoke at the finance committee meeting. I, I think I was pretty clear in those comments. I can tell you that the city's already been approached by another business group uh, for a significantly larger sum of money so this will not be the first nor the last time that we're going to be dealing with this. Um, so we'll, Corey, sharpen up your pencil and get that checkbook ready. Any other comments? Hearing none, we have a motion to approve a $5,000 one-time funding. Uh, it has been seconded. If you are in favor, vote yes. If you are opposed, vote no. And the clerk will call the roll. Uh, before we do that, it's my understanding, uh, I don't know if Logan's on, but Corey, we had talked about this. Because it's contingency, it requires a two-thirds vote. Is that correct? It actually requires a three-fourths vote. So that would be nine members would have to vote in the affirmative. <clears throat> Understood. Clerk, please call the roll. Jennings. No. Shore. No. Nabel. No. Zarazua. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Slowinski. Aye. Kneebone. Aye. Leek. No. Dalton. Aye. Fischler. Aye. Morrow. Aye. Seven four. That is not a three quarters vote, therefore the motion fails. Next item on the agenda is item number 20, and that begins on page 70 of your packet. That is an ordinance amendment for chapter 2.21 uh, regarding the standing rules of government, the Common Council, a reconsideration of the question. Alder Jennings, you brought this forward. I will turn the floor over to you. Yeah, basically this is a minor uh, word change to align the ordinance better with what the intention is based on Robert's rules of order. Um, I discussed this with our attorney. He made um, the case last, last meeting as to why this was appropriate. Um, and sometimes the, um, when ordinances are in our books that are written in weak ways, it's not apparent until they're used. And so when it was used, it was clear to me that the language was insufficient. Um, I looked at other ordinance language in other places, consulted with our attorney and President Johnson. And I think this is improving, clarifying the language of the ordinance. So it's in line with what Robert's rules intends. Thank you. Uh, attorney Beveridge, uh, would you want to chime in on this? Apparently the, the statute, uh, we had talked about this last week, aligns with the five days. Is that correct for uh, any alder to request a reconsideration? Uh, that's right. There's, there's no statute for reconsideration, but uh, yeah, it aligns with the five day period during which a mayor uh, has to either uh, sign or veto uh, an action. Okay. Once, it's, once it's approved by council, which uh, my interpretation of that would be five business days. Uh, typically, when you're looking at counting days under statute, any number less than 30 is usually read as business days unless otherwise specified. Thank you. Any other questions or comments or a motion? Alder Jennings. Move to approve. Thank you. Do we have a second? Seconded by President Johnson. Discussion? 
Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Morrow. Aye. Pishler. No. Dalton. No. Leek. Aye. Kneebone. Aye. Slowinski. No. Johnson. Aye. Zarazua. Aye. Nabel. Aye. Shore. Aye. Jennings. Aye. I have 8 3. Is that correct, Clerk? Correct. 8 3. The motion passes, and uh, that our, our agenda is exhausted, and we are adjourned at 7 55. A video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com slash videos.